The actions of slave rebels and runaways, freedom petitioners and claimants did not lie outside of, but shaped abolition and its goals. For example, I found the British Quaker abolitionist Elizabeth Herricks called for immediate abolition in 1824, which most historians are aware of. It's the first call for immediate abolition of slavery. Uh, Herrick, in this pamphlet, coupled her call for immediate abolition with a strong defense of the Demerara slave rebellion that had taken just a year, taken place just a year prior. So as most abolitionists understood, the story of abolition must begin with the struggles of the enslaved. And this is particularly true of uh, something like the Haitian Revolution, uh, whose impact uh, is on the movement to abolish slavery has not really been appreciated. Um, we have many histories of the Haitian Revolution, uh, and we are aware of the tragic history uh, of the island, sort of made worse by um, the, the policies of uh, former colonizers. Uh, but we're really not aware of how profound its impact was on the movement to abolish slavery, how, if in fact, it was the first instance of immediate uncompensated, that is to slaveholders, uh, abolition. So the connection between slave resistance and abolition in the United States was proximate and continuous. It gave abolition its most enduring issue, the fugitive slave controversy, and provided the movement with its most dynamic exponents, fugitive slave abolitionists. We are all aware of Frederick Douglass, but of course there were many men and women like Douglass who wrote their narratives, and their narratives in a way constituted the literature of the abolition movement, uh, and they also became very effective critics of pro-slavery ideology. Slaveholders found it difficult to dismiss former slaves as uh, northern abolitionists who knew nothing about slavery and who were simply armchair philosophers. In fact, fugitive slaves, through their experiences, uh, could uh, oppose and could criticize and present a very alternative picture of slavery for a much broader audience uh, than that that slaveholders uh, wanted to propagate, that they were benevolent and paternalistic and took care of their slaves. So even after bitter divisions sundered the abolition movement, nothing brought all abolitionists together more readily than the fugitive slaves' desperate bid for freedom. Fugitive slaves also led some abolitionists to justify revolutionary resistance to slavery. Some historians have declared black resistance to enslavement passe, but it was central to the abolition movement. To leave the enslaved out of abolition is to profoundly miss the part that African Americans have played in shaping the protest traditions of American democracy. Slave resistance revolutionized abolitionist discourse and practice and moved abolition into northern state and courthouses. Northern personal liberty laws and attempts to grant fugitives trial by jury and prevent the kidnapping of free blacks into slavery challenge the extraterritoriality of Southern slave codes mandated by the federal fugitive slave laws. 